go, according to Skype. And uh, we are going to go to Frank Bernuccio. He is going to join us here in just a few moments. And uh, we will see what happens here with the man, the myth, the legend of the USA Gov policy. And uh, I don't know. Where is he? Where is the legend? Where's that man? Where's that legend? I need that legend in my life. I need a legend in my life. This is Frank Fernuccio. Please leave a message. Well, Frank Fernuccio is going to have left a message. So, we don't have Frank Fernuccio. So what happened to Frank Fernuccio? What happened to the biggest star in the business? What happened to the biggest star in the business? And we're going to give him a little bit of time here. Because I think he's probably just going to call us back. But, uh, in fact, we're going to do this just because I'm... Welcome to the world-famous Jiggy Jaguar radio program. Broadcasting live from Hutchinson, Kansas. Call Jiggy right now. 267-22-Jiggy. Presenting... Jiggy Jaguar. Yes, indeed. It is the big broadcast. We are live coast to coast and border to border on iHeartRadio today. And we are going to go to our first guest here on our big program. And uh, this is going to be quite the fun little interview. I actually have been really looking forward to this all day. Um, Vinny Isabella is going to be with us here in just a few moments. She is going to join us from California. Yes, indeed. And uh, we are going to go to Vinay. Bina? Is it Bina? Or is it, is it Bina? I think it's Bina. I think it's Vina Isabella. So we will see what happens. Hello? Ms. Isabella, how are you? It's James Lowe calling you for your radio interview. How are you, my friend? Um, fine, thank you. Now, I, uh, I before we get started, I want to make sure I get your first name pronounced correctly. Is it Vina or Vena? Vina. Vina. Vina Isabella. Vina Isabella. Okay. Because I did not want to butcher that name because you are fantastic. Um, we have got a great guest with us today. Vina Isabella is with us. Uh, she joins us here on our big broadcast, and she's an expert on the art of strip teasing. And uh, I have been looking forward to this interview all damn day, ever since Irwin sent me the information, and uh, I am very interested in talking to you about your book that is coming out very soon. It's called Strippers, The Art of the Tees. So, first of all, tell us a little bit about this book, my friend. Uh, well, it's um, a book that uh, tells us all about um, uh, stripping, and... Um, and the uh, beautiful women that are involved in it uh, through the centuries. Um, it, uh, I consider uh, stripping to be an art form. Yes, because yes. Because it takes more than good looks to be a, a, a stripper. You have to uh, know about uh, costume and makeup and lighting and choreogra- uh, choreography. Um, uh, you have to have talent. And above all, showmanship. We have got a great guest with us today. Vina Isabella is with us. She joins us here on our big program. And we are talking a little bit about her brand new book, which is coming out soon, Strippers, The Art of the Tease. So is strip teasing in Las Vegas any different than other major cities in the U.S. and around the world? Uh, Well, um in Las Vegas is known as the entertainment capital of the world. Yes. And uh, for less performers like um, Lily St. Cyr and Tempest Storm uh, with big names, uh, with their names on the marquees, and they were being paid big, big salaries. Uh, Lily St. Cyr was known uh, in the 50s to re- receive like $5,000 a week. Um, 
And also, uh, performers, when they uh, go on the road, um, they're uh, known as feature performers, and they get paid large salaries in hick towns all across, you know, the United States. Um, I, the left uh, uh, is known as an American tradition, so uh, in Europe, it's a little bit different, okay, you yes. know, than here. Yes. Uh, so, is is this uh, is this book? Uh, tell tell us about the uh, the writing process for the book and 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 everything that you have you have done to bring this book to life. Well, I've been working on it for a long time <laughs> because <laughs> I, I uh, was working in Las Vegas at the Palomino Club, which is uh, one of the major tourist attractions. And I pretty much grew up there in the light booth. And um, uh, I, I, first of all, when I got, I was working at the Maxim Hotel uh, as a DJ, and the, um, they changed the discotheque into a showroom. And then this show came in called Old Time Burlesque, which was um, baggy pants com- comics and uh, girls, you know, exotic dancers. And uh, so I did the lights for that show, I don't know how many times, six months here, six months there. But then um, one day the owner uh, came in and asked me if I wanted to work in his strip club. And I'd never been in a strip club before, and I was really scared to go in there. (laughs) I was like, (laughs) because, you know, there's all this um, stigma attached to, you know, that, uh, that kind of entertainment. And um, so, anyways, I needed a job, so I um, I went there and I had the light booth with all these uh, special effects, and I had all these performers, amazing performers. They all had like a number of shows, each one of them, and I was working on their shows. You know, like as I'm an art major, uh, first of all, um, so this is just another form of of like painting with lights. Yeah. Um, so I really got into it and, uh, and I started, I was the MC and I, I saw before me this fantastic performances. I mean, uh, each girl would be backstage. I mean, they'd be, um, they, uh, building props and sewing costumes and they'd sell their shows to each other. And I mean, it was, I mean, a professional show and, uh, so then I, I got really, like, I befriended them, and I got interested in, like, like how does a girl become a stripper? I mean, like, you know, I was really interested, you know, how this all came about, and I started to interview them. And so that's a long time ago, <laughs> many years ago. And then throughout the, the years, I've been, you know, meeting strippers and interviewing them, and I've been working on them. You know, different shows like um, uh, like the Minsky show, a burlesque show in Las Vegas. Um, um, I came to L.A. and I worked at uh, the Body Shop, which was in a famous um, strip club where the same girl, I would be working with some of the same girls because they'd be, um, uh, you know, going from, uh, what do you call it, they're on a, uh, where they go from one city to another. So I... Um, so there, you know, I, I saw another thing, too, that in Las, ba- uh, in Los Angeles, it was all about these girls uh, trying to get in the movies or um, uh, a lot of uh, movie directors and photographers and all these people would come in and they would cast them. And they all had, um, you know, their, uh, um, what do you call it, um, uh, when I interviewed them, you know, they all had, yes. this, uh, you know, credits. You know all these credits, and um, so I saw something a little bit different in Los Angeles, and so I just been working on it. I I thought this, and also there's a lot of stigma attached to being a stripper, and I wanted to um, shed some like like they shine in the spotlight, but uh, they live in the shadows of society, you know. And I I was thinking to myself that. No, this this is something else. Like I see something else, you know. Like 
the stigma attached to it, I, I, I want to take it away. I want to shed some life, shed some life on a misunderstood occupation. That's awesome. Pretty that is awesome. We have got a great <laughs> guest with us today. She joins us live here on the telephone and talking about strippers, the art of the tease, which is a brand new book. And, um, you have, you have got such a great background here. Uh, talk to us a little bit, uh, Vina here about completing this book. What, what was it like putting this book together? Well, um, I wrote the book a long time ago, a couple of years ago, but when you take it to the computer, um, you know, each page becomes uh, this uh, big deal, okay? Like, um, like I said, I'm an art major, so I designed uh, each page, and then um, I'm not that great at the uh, gra uh, graphic part of it, so I found, uh, lucky enough to find... Um, a graphic illustrator, and um, so we've been working together on this, but it's a slow process, I must say. And also, um, I have a collection of uh, interviews of famous strippers uh, who I worked, and like a lot of them I worked with, um, and then bios of, you know, uh, strippers from the past, and uh, I have um, like a history uh, how it all began, and uh, I take you through, you know, the centuries and uh, how it changes. And um, let me see what else. <laughs> I, uh, like I said, oh yeah, I had to get releases, releases. I have to find these people and and get them to sign releases. So that's another big deal. Uh, so it's a very time consuming. Um, but I want I want to say that I actually enjoyed the whole process that's awesome well the book is <laughs> the public <laughs> the the book is tremendous we've got vena isabella with us today she joins us here on our big program and um so doing uh doing this book and getting this book together um a lot of this strip teasing and burlesque and everything are are, are they one and the same or is it two different arts? How, how does how does this work? Um, well, with uh, burlesque, um, it's uh, to do with um, like little shows, you know, like uh, each girl comes out and she does a performance. And then there's, there's the Baggy Pants comics um, that, that came out of vaudeville, and uh, they came to burlesque, and they... And, you know, they put on these little skits and things. It's, it's like um, uh, sexy fun, I guess. <laughs> uh, it's entertainment. That's what it is. It's entertainment. We have got a grown up. <laughs> yes, yes. Well, we've got a great guest with us today. Vina Isabella joins us here on our big program. She is tremendous. And she has an incredible new book out there. Um are men more interested in strip teasing than women? Uh, t talk to us a little bit about this part of it. Um, well, uh, back in the day, <laughs> uh, the the Minsky shows uh, were mostly for um, men only. But uh, things have changed. <laughs> Women have wised up because men, it seems to me. <laughs> Well, always go to strip clubs. They like to look at beautiful women. Have a drink, relax. So um, the wives, uh, well, I think they finally said, uh, maybe I should join my husband and uh, get some new ideas. <laughs> Keep them happy, right? <laughs> so uh, today we have, um, you know, pole, uh, poles and strip poles and houses and uh, um, and uh, the women like um, there's a lot of women go to strip clubs now <laughs> like they, they see that um, something maybe to um, make them uh, more uh, sexually uh, active or uh, to um, make their husbands or their boyfriends 
happy, I guess. That is awesome. <laughs> that is awesome. We have got a great guest with us today. She joins us live here on our big broadcast. So what did Mae West contribute to the world of burlesque? To tell us a little bit about this, my friend. Well, um, Mae West is a voluptuous sex symbol. Yes. Uh, she's an actress, singer, comedian, playwright, screenwriter, known for her double um, tundras. Like, for example, she climbed the ladder of success rung by rung. <laughs> or it's better to be looked than overlooked. Or uh, when I'm good, I'm very good. But when I'm bad, I'm better. <laughs> you know, just, uh, these lines that um, uh, she's famous for. And she wrote a movie called um, uh, She'd Done Them Wrong, starring Cary Grant. And she won the Academy Award. Uh, and then um, my little chickadee was... Uh, W.C. Fields. So she basically brought burlesque to the big screen. And she became the second richest person in America in 1929, next to Randolph. Really? <laughs> That's pretty damn amazing. <laughs> She's one of my favorites. I love her. We have got... I mean, this... go, go, go ahead. Go ahead, my friend. Keep talking. Go ahead. a lot of... Um, famous women, you know, in going through the centuries. Um, like um, Anne Rand, uh, not Anne Rand, <laughs> excuse me. Um, <laughs> not her. <laughs> uh, um, the lady with the fan dance, Sally Rand. Is what yes. I'm say. yes, yes, yes. You know, um, a Gypsy Rose Lee, okay, she's um, synonymous with uh, a as the uh, most famous stripper of all. Like, um, these are um, women who dared to go beyond the mores of society. <laughs> and, uh, um, you know, they, they gave us um, a wonderful shows. Like, um, Sally Rand, for example, she, um, I'll tell you a little story about her. Uh, she got hired, okay, and, but she had a couple of hours before she was going to be, you know, on stage. And so she ran to this uh, secondhand store, and she was trying to find a costume. And she found these two big uh, pink feather fans and this little chemise. And she runs back to the club, and uh, the the um, uh, the manager saying, "You got to get ready. You got to get ready. You're going to be on stage in you know a couple of minutes or something." And uh, so she didn't have a chance to, uh, she had to, like, uh, fix the chemise so it fit her better. And she, she just ran out on stage with the two big feathered fans. And um, she, um, you know, she put one fan in front of her and another, like, you know, she was nude behind that. And uh, the audience just went wild. And she was, so after the performance, um, she demanded, manager came up to her and she said oh I'm so sorry she said I didn't I didn't have a chance to get my costume together and my act together and and I'm like I, I'm she was apologizing right he's saying no girl that is your act <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome and she became one of the most famous strippers in the world um and also um these women would um uh they would compete with each other you know, it's like you had to have a gimmick. You heard that phrase? Gotta have a <laughs> yes, gimmick. gotta have a gimmick. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Okay, so they they would you know come up with all the different kinds of things. Um, Sally Ranch used to go through the streets with this um, long blonde wig on, with her nude body on, and riding on a white horse, <laughs> for example. You know, to promote herself. You know, like do all kinds of crazy things. Um, but, uh, let me see uh, another story. Oh, yeah, one of my favorite um, performers, um, Anne Helm. Um, back in the day, she was uh, she was discovered by uh, Bigfield, who had these big shows in Paris, and um, she would do sing these naughty songs, and uh, and she would go behind a screen, and she would change her costumes. Uh, while she was putting her show on. And the people, they never really got to see her nude body. 
okay, but it was all about imag you know, like a fantasy, you know, like <laughs> imagining stuff. Like she just peeked through the, you know, put her leg out on the screen or something. I don't know what she did exactly, but uh, she would keep the fantasy going. You know, it's not it's not just about um, being naked. It's it's how you disrobe. Yes. Yes, indeed. We have got a <laughs> great guest with us today. So, so Vina, are you based in Los Angeles or Vegas, or where 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 are you based nowadays? Oh, um, in Los Angeles. Los Angeles. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, um, so when when is this book going to be coming out? Do you have a uh, do you have a, a a target date or or anything? Um, as soon as I can. <laughs> Um, right now, I'm I'm actually on the last page, <laughs> uh, which is um, to do with uh, the Burlesque Hall of Fame. Actually, every every year they have a convention, stripper convention in Las Vegas, and uh, strippers from all over all all over the world come and unite and perform and uh, and keep the leg legacy of burlesque. Alive. <laughs> fantastic, fantastic. Well, you have been amazing. Thank you for doing this, and uh, I, I, I look forward to uh, to chatting with you some more. Keep us updated on everything, and I will talk to you soon. Have yourself a wonderful holiday. Okay, you too. Thank you, my friend. There she goes. That's Vina Isabella. Yeah. She joins us today here on our big program. She was uh, quite interesting.